Um, I know in the past we've done uh, stuff on Power BI. I've done some talks on DAX. We've got uh, guys talking about uh, Power Automate and uh, Power Apps, but we don't usually do a lot of things on Power Query. So I thought I'd uh, go in and see where I could find uh, some various things on there uh, for people to use. And I found a couple of things. So hopefully this gets you guys, um, you, you find some use cases in here that are, are useful. Um, let me go to my presentation and actually move things forward. So who am I? I'm the uh, lead analytics architect. Uh, so unlike Reed, I have no visual capabilities. And uh, that's why I was asking if he has any uh, good resources on uh, getting started with good UX, because uh, it looks like the visuals that he's creating are uh, fantastic and stunning. Um, but I do a lot of the back, uh, back end work. I play around a lot with the data. I do a lot of ETL and a lot of it on uh, the Azure side and you know teach code uh, build a lot of these things for uh, the community. So today's tips, uh, I've, uh, getting CRM uh, metadata. So a lot of folks use dynamic CRM. Uh, I find it a really, really good uh, repository for holding all of your customer related information. Uh, obviously, that's what CRMs are for. Um, but oftentimes, if you use the Power BI connector to uh, link in there uh, natively, you don't actually get access to all the information. So all those little drop down boxes that you get, um, there's uh, it, it doesn't come through natively. So there's a couple of different ways uh, to go about getting it. But there's one way that I find is really really easy and you don't have to go out and, and uh, download external programs in order to use these types of things. So let me um, get into that. And this is just my last page because I don't like making long presentations. I uh, would much rather uh, get into actually uh, presenting uh, the content here. So start off with um, is we're going to go in a link to uh, our CRM. So. Uh, just in case you guys don't know, let me just pull on uh, CRM here. Um, if anybody doesn't know where to get their actual uh, CRM uh, uh, API link, uh, you may or may not have access uh, to do this, but you actually have to go into uh, some of the advanced settings. You just go into uh, your CRM here, go to advanced settings. Uh, it'll take you onto that page. Um, depending on how long this takes for uh, me to load up at home here. Uh, I'll show you the navigation. If not, I've just got the uh, the link myself and I'll show that uh, that after it loads. So we'll give this, you know, 10 more seconds here. Okay, looks like it went nice and fast. Um, you go into the little drop down by settings, go to customizations and say developer resources. And here is the link you want to use right there, the service root URL. So. That's what I want to use right now. In order to uh, link to uh, CRM using uh, Power Query here, I'm going to go new source, more. And I'm just going to search for Dynamics. It's the Dynamics uh, 365 online. Um, you may be able to use this with Business Central. I haven't used that, uh, that one as of yet. I know this one works with uh, Dynamics 365. So once you've got that, it's going to ask for your service URL. Great. It just uses the uh, this current uh, version, the 9.2. Now, one thing that happens um, when you uh, load this type of information is it uses the uh, 2.0 implementation. Um, if you have the 1.0 implementation, this may not work. So if you have older APIs, um, you'd uh, uh, your mileage may vary, so just make sure you're using the uh, the newer stuff uh, in order for the uh, for this to work. Uh, I'm just going to grab one of the tables uh, in our CRM. It's just the campaign, just because I know there's got a little bit of data in there um, that's not sensitive uh, for us. So I'll just grab that and hit OK. It's going to go out to CRM, get the data, and bring it back into my uh, my instance here. Okay. I am going to uh, bring over uh, two columns just because there's so many columns in here that uh, it's not necessarily all that helpful. So I want my status code. Oops. I want to deselect all my columns. Let's go status code, select that one. And I want to have my 
objective. There we go. So I just want these two columns. All I'm doing this for is to show that how we actually go out and get that metadata here. So you can see here, you know, we've got a couple of uh, workshops that we had, and most of these are in status code zero. One of these is in status code three, but that means absolutely nothing to me as an end user. If I were to go and load this data in, um, I'm not actually going to get any value out of doing this. So, it, um, you know, you really need those drop downs and actually figuring out what's going in there. Um, there are a couple of additional tools where you go out and actually get, uh, I believe it's called, it's a custom uh, power query table that it goes and actually grabs the string map uh, that maps these various codes uh, to your stuff. But um, again, that is, you have to go out and get additional downloads. It's not necessarily one of the native things that you can do just within uh, uh, Power Query itself. So, how do we go about doing this? Well, what you need to do is you actually need to add an additional header into your request. If I look at my source over on the right hand side here, let's zoom in and actually show, I'll click on the source. You can see up here, it's just doing an O data call. So it's doing an OData feed to the URL that I uh, applied earlier, and then it's using this 2.0 implementation. All I need to do is actually add an additional header in this imp, uh, implementation area. And let's just close that. And just to make this look slightly nicer, I'm just going to put this on a new line. And put a comma there. There we go. Okay. Um, all it is, it's called include annotations equals, and I'm going to copy this because this is a uh, very specific annotation that you want to make sure you include. That's going to give me a problem. It's called odata.community.display.v1.formatted value. And um, that'll give me an error until I actually hit enter on that. And for your guys' uh, edification, I'm just going to toss that into uh, the chat there, just so you guys have the exact copy of this. I've also got a couple of links to um, uh, where I found the original answer to this, which was on Chris Webb's blog. Um, now, if I go down to my bottom again here, it's not going to look any different natively. Um, even if I just go to the navigation area where I uh, had my information from before, um, having all my columns, um, even if I scroll over to the far right hand side, it's still not going to show me uh, the data that I want. What ends up happening when you include that header is each of the columns uh, that are uh, one of those drop down values or uh, a, a mapped string, they've actually they're actually returned with a metadata uh, object. So there is an an another value or another uh, function within Power Query that you can use called value.metadata. And you just you're actually able to extract the various uh, areas of a specific value out. So even let me just scroll over here on the far right hand side. And let's see if I can get any of this stuff. All right, yeah, it doesn't even it doesn't uh, give me any additional uh, columns over on the right hand side there. So anyways, let's go uh, remove columns. What you have to do is you create an additional column here. So I'm going to so add columns and it's just a custom column. So this is going to be our status code. I'm going to give this a much friendlier name uh, called status code with capitals and a space in there because I want my end users to actually understand what I'm talking about. Got, we'll use value dot, oh, why is that? Oh, there we go, weird. I don't know why that's not showing up, but whatever. Meta data. All right. Again, I don't know why that is not showing up for me, but I'll uh, deal with it as I need to. Um, this is going to be status code in square brackets. Oh. 
Great. You know what? I've actually already written this, so why uh, why mess with something that is uh, already working? I'll show you what the uh, the code actually looks like. So it's value dot meta uh, dot metadata. You put your column name in the square brackets, and then you toss that exact same string in square brackets at the end. Um, one last thing that I've got just at the end is a little question mark. All that does is handle null values. If it didn't come back with a value, it would give me an error. Um, and in this case, if there's a null value, it just translates it to null. Anyways, let's hit OK on there. You can see it looks significantly better over there. But now I actually get uh, the proper strings back. I can go in, get rid of this uh, column, call it a day. Now I can actually look at my objectives by based off of what their status code are. So that's. Quick tip number one uh, for the day, really good way of getting uh, some of these uh, descriptors out of dynamic CRM. Tip number two of the day, um, I know I showed it on the screen there, but I didn't mention it, is actually doing some advanced table profiling. Uh,